Okay, this is a week six, uh, bond evaluation, additional clarification file. Suppose we have one bond. This is from your lecture notes. A bond with 10% coupon and semi-annual pay, 20-year maturity. Interest rate uh, in the market is 12%. So we have uh, YTM, we'll touch this YYTM. So draw timeline. And since this one pays semi-annually, so one period here is one semi-annual. That's why over 20 years, we have 40 semi-annuals. And the market rate is 12%. And since it's six months, divided by two, we have a 6% as one semi-annual. Each semi-annual, 6%, yearly 12%. And 10% coupon, $100 yearly. But every six months, half of the money, $50, you'll get over 40 semi-annuals. And at the end, you'll get 1000 So because the current market rate is 12%, another way, other investors, maybe your friends who invest in other places in the market, others in the market will get 12% return. And then to be fair, you should also earn 12% because of the current market, you can get 12% in other place. But look at that. The company says we're going to pay 10% interest. This is the company's interest payment. And it says company pay 10%. In the market, you can get 12%. So it looks like a company pays 2% less than market. Then we calculate the bond price and I, PMT, FOB. Then your calculator will show the bond price today is A50. If you love this bond, you'll pay only A50. So why A50? Why 900? Why 1200? First, A50, that's less than 1000. We call this a discount bond. Why? Because the bond price is less than 1,000, then the name is discount bond. If it's bigger than 1,000, remember, we called that premium bond. Then why discount bond? Because company payment is 10, in the market 12. So market rate is more than company, or company is less than market. That's why you pay less than 1,000 par value. You pay less than $1,000. We'll come back, okay, more here. But now we know the price should be less than 1,000 because company interest payment is less than, in the market you can get the interest, 10% versus 12%, okay? Then the question is, what is your return from this bond investment? Is it a 10% because the company said it will pay you 10% interest? Answer is no. Look at here, you invested 850. You will invest 850 and you will get yearly $100 because every six months you will collect $50. So yearly basis, okay, one year basis, you will collect $100. And even company says 10% coupon, but compared to your interest, how much you invested compared to your investment? How much you invested? You invested 850. For 850, you collect 100. This means not 10%, but 11.76%. So yearly basis, you are collecting not 10 as company said, but you are collecting close to 12, but exactly 11.76%. At the end, although you invest only 850, company will give you 1,000. $150 more. So what this means, yearly basis you collect around 11.76%. At the end, you collect $150 more. Through those process, your actual yearly return will be exactly 12% like other investors today. So remember, okay, you remember any bond investments 
if you purchase the bond based on today, whatever market interest rate and whatever the company coupon, you can calculate whatever the bond price, you pay that bond. And then if you keep collect, you keep collect those promised coupon interest payment and then collect at the end of 1,000, then your bond return is not coupon but market interest rate. So that's why we call the market interest rate as yield to maturity, return to maturity. Our example, your yield to maturity or return to maturity is 12%. If you hold the bond to the end, then your yearly return is 12%. This is the same as other guys. That means this is a fair deal. To be fair, you should pay 850 only. Then another one here, sinking fund. Maybe the last page of your chapter, uh, this chapter, uh, lecture note, sinking fund. Typically, without sinking fund, okay, if there is no sinking fund condition, then you have to wait. And then the final period, our example, 20 years later, or 40 semi-annual later, the semi-annual, 40 semi-annual later, you will get 1,000. Okay, that's without sinking fund. If this is sinking fund, that means this 1,000 uh, par value or face value, you will collect earlier than the last period. So let's suppose year 19, that means 38 semi-annual. Year 19, company pays 300 out of 1,000. Year 9, uh, and 39th semi-annual, company pays 300. So even before maturity, you already recovered the 600. Then the remaining, 400 company will pay you at the end of the period. So you got 1,000, but your collection or receiving the par value is earlier, part of the par value company pays earlier than maturity year. That's the sinking fund condition, and investors are going to like it because what? If the company is in trouble the last year still, they secure the 600. And the last item in this chapter, call provision. Call provision means a company will call and ask you to return the bond you have. Company will purchase the bond earlier than its maturity year. Why they call? Anytime they think it's a good time to call. One example is suppose, okay, current market is 12%. And if a company coupon 12%. Okay, so if market rate 12%, coupon 12%, then company can sell, sell bond at what? Coupon is the same as the market, then bond price should be how much? Yes, good, 1,000. Another way, company borrows every single bond selling, company borrows $1,000. And suppose, okay, if if year five, five market rate dropped, drops to let's say uh, five percent, then company can attach coupon five percent and still company can sell or borrow, right? Borrow a bond at what, 1,000. So if this happens, okay, this is if, okay? If this happens and company attached the call provision, then what company can do? They call or repurchase the bond. Then year five, they reissue, okay? They reissue the bond and but they only attach 5% interest. Still, they can borrow per bond $1,000.
So they don't need to continually pay 12% next 15 years. They finish this bond and then reissue another bond, but still they borrow 1,000 per bond, but now they pay only 5% as interest payment. So when company calls, then they usually pay call premium. That means they don't pay just 1,000 per bond. They pay not just 1,000, but they pay 1,000 plus $70, something like that. So that additional payment, that's we call it call premium. That's a little compensation to the investors for early termination of the bond. Default call project means a uh, company tell the investors, okay, this is a core bond. That means company can terminate the bond earlier than maturity. But we will never call in a year, in three years. At least over five years later, we will call. So if that's the condition, then we call that five year as deferred call period. Another way, investors don't need to worry about company's call over the next five years. After five years, company anytime can call. Make a whole call means simply the investors will get not $1,000 plus 70, but they will get whatever the market value at the time. If the company calls, at that time, the bond value is 900, then company pays 900. If the bond value is 1,900, company will pay 1,900. So to the investors, they don't lose. If they want to keep similar bond continually, then receive money from the bond, uh, from the company, and then they buy another bond with a similar price. So this make a whole call, you receive the whole bond market price at that time. And through the reinvestment, you continue that investment with the similar bonds. So you do not lose. That's additional information about call provision.